Hello and welcome to an overview of Salt and March. Oakway, or Mabus 3202, is comprised of 11 township and city full-time career fire departments. Each year, one Oakway fire department takes the lead to organize, design, and deploy a mass casualty incident training event. The 2023 event is scheduled for September 22, 2023, and is being coordinated, planned, and designed by the Waterford Regional Fire Department. In preparation for this event, multiple videos and other training resources have been made available to all Oakway Fire Departments and related emergency services. We will continue to post training videos and information on our YouTube channel at Oakway Training. This presentation is hosted by Jeff Lassers from the West Bloomfield Township Fire Department. He is joined by Lt. Steve Meyer from the Waterford Regional Fire Department. During this video, Lt. Meyer will provide an overview of the SALT triage method and the March assessment and treatment algorithm. Hi, Steve. How's it going, Jeff? Good. Good. Let everybody know who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Yeah. So uh, my name is Steve Meyer. I'm a lieutenant with Waterford Regional Fire Department. I'm also one of our instructors here. Been here for 10 years and in the fire service for 16. And how long have you been doing any type of active assailant SALT March training have you been doing? Uh, so I've been a member of the RTF team since its inception here uh, at Waterford, which is eight, nine years. Yeah. Um, the SALT triage training is actually something that we just recently developed. So we're starting to push that out with the changes that are coming with the protocols. Right on. So you're here to talk about SALT and March. So why don't you tell everybody what the SALT field triage method is? Sure. Uh, so SALT triage, pretty basic. It's just another form of triaging, sorting patients. Um, it is a developed standard uh, nationally. So there was a core criteria that the CDC actually looked at and said, hey, we need to make sure that we're fitting within these guidelines from that SALT triage uh, was developed. Yeah, from what I understand, we have the model uniform core criteria or the MUC for mass casualty triage. And so it's this like 24 point checklist criteria that says your life-saving interventions, your assessment and categorization of patients should meet this criteria. And as it turns out, SALT's like the only one that meets all the criteria. Correct. Uh, and it was actually developed to meet that criteria. So there was nothing right. that we had in place originally to meet everything, all the standards that were there. So uh, SALT's kind of the best of all of the other triage systems. Okay. Yeah. So it gave us what we needed to learn from all those other ones. We got away from start, jump start, and all those other ones. We're now into SALT. So walk us through the steps. Step one, what is it? Yep. So first step, sort. Very simply, uh, we want to, just like we have with all of our other triage systems, we want to make sure that we're getting our patients sorted based off of their severity. And it's really simplified from there. They break it down into three different people that you sort. So you walk into this situation or mass chaos, and you're thinking of three different types of people from what I understand. Those that can walk away, those that can wave to you, but maybe not be able to like move, and those that are unresponsive. Correct. Yeah, so anytime we go into a room, whether it's uh, an active shooter, any type of mass casualty incident, we're going to follow these same steps. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, when we arrive is try to get everybody that can follow our commands and get them to move out of the way. And we we consider them our walkers. So anybody that can follow our direction and go to a collection point where they can be further triaged, those are our green tag patients. So we want to remove them first. Once they're out of our way, uh, then we're going to go to those that weren't physically capable of moving themselves. And we're going to figure out who can wave at us, the wavers. Those that can follow directions, signal us over, maybe they have a uh, gunshot to the leg or amputations, things along those lines, where they're alert and they're still conscious and following direction, but they can't physically remove themselves. From there, we're going to go to the, the unresponsive uh, patients, those that did not respond to us at all. So I got all the people that can walk, walked out of the way. I got people that can wave, wave me over, tell them we need help. And then I have all these other people not moving. So I only have two sets of people left, people that can wave but can't get out, and the people that aren't moving at all. Who do I assess first? So the first thing we want to look at is those that are going to be closer to that death is the easiest way to describe it. So we want to go to the ones that aren't responding to us at all, figure out why they're not responding to us. Are they dead or is there something that we can do in a short amount of time to give them a chance of survival? Okay, so step three, what's that? Uh, so step three is actually the biggest reason salt triage exists, and that's life-saving intervention. So again, going back to that core criteria that we talked about earlier, these life-saving interventions is what the difference that we can really make in this triage process. It's almost like we needed another algorithm to drive our assessment and treatments within the SALT structure of triaging, right? So Correct. that's really what MARCH is, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, so MARCH allows us as a guide to conduct the assessment and then decide what treatments to do and what scope. What are some th rules of thumb to take home regarding life-saving interventions? So really, there's 
three main ones that we're going to look at. The first one is going to be that we keep it within a minute. So we want to make sure that these interventions that we're performing are going to be within that 60 second time frame. From there, we need to make sure that the procedures that we're doing are within our scope of practice. So making sure that an EMT is performing skills that they've been trained and certified to do. And then lastly, if the patient doesn't respond to the interventions that we did uh, in those 60 seconds, then they're going to be labeled as an expectant victim. So if they continue to show signs of death after I do a life-saving intervention that in the March algorithm, they're expectant. Correct. Okay. So step four is the part where we're going to actually treat transport classification. So I've walked in, I've sorted my patients. I then assessed those patients that are still there, and then I administered life-saving interventions, SAL. Now I'm at T, and this is where I kind of categorize them for their treatment and transport. Which ones do we actually give those beyond the life-saving intervention and then get off scene to those hospitals, right? Correct. Okay. So what are those different classifications? Just like our other um, triage systems that we're familiar with or have used in the past, um, we're just trying to get them into some basic categories to indicate who we want to get to the hospital and get treatments to first. So like we talked about earlier with our green, those are the minimal patients. From there, we're going to go to the yellow, which is going to be a delay in transport because we have to focus our energy on higher priority patients. Red being an immediate, obviously those are ones that we're going to have to get to the hospital rather quickly or get treatment to them rather quickly. Gray, this is a a little bit new concept for us, and this is one of the changes with SALT versus the start triage we were doing is we added the gray, and those are the expectants that you had uh, referred to earlier. These are the patients where, because we don't have enough resources, they're not technically dead yet, but we can't use the resources we have on them because they're too close to death. Uh, And we're going to have to push them aside until we have those resources available to us to try to give them a a better chance. So it's kind of like that safety valve that says you're almost spending too much time in this patient for the greater good. And although it may feel really weird to walk away from somebody that's got that thready pulse that's obviously circling the drain, I don't got all the stuff to treat, treat. Like I know if I only had one patient. Correct. And that's a hard concept for us in EMS because we're used to having one, one patient at a time. So... Um, it's a really important category to, to start getting comfortable with, um, and it's definitely a, a different designation than the black, uh, which we may have put them into a category of black in the past. Which could be obvious. Right. Right. Or we already assessed them, did everything, provided a life-saving intervention, then made them expect, and then came back and they were dead. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that kind of really gives us a nice overview of SALT. And then obviously March is inside of that. So again, we've already kind of talked on the fact that March allows you to have an algorithm that says, what do you assess and what do you do when you find problems? So walk us through the acronym. Yep. So the acronym itself, March, M is the mass hemorrhage. A is for airway. R is respirations. C is circulation. And then H is hypothermia. Okay. And so really that guides it. We're not going to get into all the details of that, but that gives us a nice priority of order of the algorithm to assess. And then when I find stuff, I provide a life-saving intervention and I move on, categorize the patient. So let's walk through the process of synthesizing SALT in March just one more time before we sign off here. We show up to an MCI and the first thing we need to do is sort patients. And I sort them by saying, walk, wave, or still. If you can walk, beat it. If you can wave or you're still, those are the people we're going to assess. Correct. I start with my people that are unconscious, not moving. I start to assess them using March, which outlines my assessment criteria. I deliver life-saving interventions within that same March algorithm, and I do it within my scope of practice. I want it to be less than a minute per treatment. I want to keep moving patient to patient, right? Absolutely. And then by the time I'm done with that, I'm able to then identify what patients I have, number of greens, reds, yellows, grays, all the things, and then I can get them off scene. That's essentially it, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's not, it's not any harder than that. No. Unless there's, you know, chaos and everything else. But in concept, I think that's kind of what we're hitting on. It's just, it is that simple because when it goes down, it's not going to feel that simple. Correct. And that's why we're doing what we're doing today. We want to be comfortable with that exact process.